Good morning, church. Will you worship God with me this morning? Let's worship. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Lift up a song to God who rides upon the clouds. God's name is the Lord. Be exultant before God. Parent of orphans, protector of widows is God in God's holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. God leads out the prisoners to prosperity. O oh God, when you went out before your people, through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Sing to God, O kingdoms of earth, sing praises to the Lord. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in God's sanctuary, the God of Israel. God gives power and strength to God's people. Blessed be God. The Lord be with you. Holy God, truth about your people and the ways of the world in the suffering of God and his steadfast love. Show us again the image of resilience that you desire for us. And teach us courage so that compassion may be our pathway. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen.
Come to me. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us rest in God's mercy as we pray together. Loving and merciful God, you are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You see our suffering and you have compassion. You hear our cries and have mercy. You feel our pain and walk with our sin. God, we know that we don't always get it right. We have short tempers with our family. We turn a blind eye to our brothers and sisters, living without shelter or resources. We live in fear of what's to come, instead of trusting in your guiding presence. God, forgive us when we do not come to you with our burdens. Help us bring our temper, our ignorance, and our fear to you. Help us lay it down at your feet. You are gentle and lowly in heart. In your name we pray. Amen. in steadfast love. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. church. It is great to have you with us this Sunday morning. It is a communion Sunday, so I hope that at home you have your elements ready to partake in the Lord's Supper. Another food drive is happening at Westminster Presbyterian Church. The next church-wide hands-on mission opportunity is for Preston Taylor Ministries and Second Harvest, and that food drive is going to happen on Friday, June the 5th at 9 until noon. There's an email from the church that went out 
about this. It's for second harvest. You need peanut butter, canned meat, canned vegetables, canned fruit, pasta, cereal. And for Preston Taylor, we need Clorox wipes, all-purpose cleaner, hand sanitizer, hand soap, paper towels, and toilet paper. So uh, pass that word on to your friends and your neighbors so that we might have a successful food drive for those in our community in need. Uh, we need a few more vehicles for that food drive. Contact Ralph Wheeler, or you can probably contact any of the staff at church, and we'll get you connected. Uh, this may sound like I'm tooting my own horn, but I'm not. I'm hoping that you all will be tooting your horns. i um, just been told to say this. Uh, my 10-year anniversary is coming up. Sophie's 10-year anniversary is coming up. And I know what you're saying to yourself, Donovan. It seems like more than 10 years. Uh, but uh, you're wrong. It's 10 years. Guy has been here about 15 years in June. There's a whole host of folks who have been here a long time. Polly has been here 28 years, I believe, which is, John, how long have you been here? 19, 19 years. So a mess of us. Uh, how old are you, uh, Marge? <laughs> okay, 29. Mar Margie's 29. So that's good to know. Um, so a group of people are looking at celebrating the whole staff um, next Sunday at 4 o'clock with a drive through in the parking lot. So uh, please uh, look for details in your emails about that. Um, the session is meeting on Thursday, and I ask that you keep the leadership of our church in your prayers as we try to figure out how we move forward together during these days. Those are our announcements. Let us continue to prepare our hearts for worship. The Lord be with you. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our ears, Lord. Open our lives, Lord, to your holy word so that we might have life and have it in abundance. Amen. Our scripture for this morning comes from Acts, the first chapter, verses 6 through 14. Hear the word of God. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. and You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered the city, they went into the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, 
together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm comes from Psalm 68. Please join with me in this psalm. Let God rise up, let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provide for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, Listen, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the sky. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. I'm going to find it. It's in here. It's marked. Donovan tells me it's marked. This is a big book. It is good to feel your presence this morning, even as I can't see you. Much like we feel God's spirit, we feel Christ walking among us, even if we can't see them. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 Peter, Peter who is writing a letter to some new Christians who have recently been converted, a letter of encouragement. Will you listen for the word of God? Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on God, because God cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, 
the God of all grace, who has called you to God's eternal glory in Christ, will restore and support and strengthen and establish you. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen. Let's set this up a little bit. We had Ascension Day on Wednesday, which means 40 days ago, we crucified Christ, killed him for the radical love he embodied, that he shared, hurt us so much to see someone upending systems of oppression and loving lepers and tax collectors alike. We couldn't stand it. And after we crucified him, we watched him hang on the cross for four and a half hours, writhing in agony and pain, before he was anointed and carried to the tomb, where he lay in the damp, in the dark, waiting. And then, shockingly, maybe inevitably, he rose busting out of the tomb in all of his glory, proving to us that love always wins. Love conquers death and fear and despair, even if it takes a little bit longer than we'd hoped. And so this Jesus, this resurrected Christ, with the wounds still in his hands, proving that he has shared in our sufferings, spent 40 days walking around town, gardening with us, fishing with us, breaking bread with us, walking down roads with us and talking about scripture, empowering us to go and do likewise, to spread the gospel, the good news, that love is liberating. Love knows no social boundaries or hierarchies. Love sits down with lepers and tax collectors alike and breaks bread with them. Y'all, who knew dinner could be so subversive in the kingdom of God? And then, just like that, after we've gotten to hold on to him a little bit longer and revel in his resurrection, he ascends to heaven sitting at the right hand of God, promising us that his spirit will be with us forever and ever. Amen. But if you're Peter, if you're one of his disciples that has followed him around, trying to live like him, trying to internalize his teachings, trying so hard to understand his parables, which Maybe you get one in ten right, and even then you don't get them right. If you're Peter, and you've been loved with a kind of love that shows boundless forgiveness and grace, even when you mess it up, even when you deny that love, watching God ascend and leave you, knowing you have to let go, and be a witness now to that love, I would feel, I would feel lonely, and I would feel despairing, and I would feel confused and unsure of how to move forward, and yet, Peter, the gospel spreader, who has seen the magnificence of what a kingdom can look like when people love each other unashamedly, writes this letter. He writes this letter from Rome, and he actually talks out the letter as his friend scribes it. And I imagine him maybe pacing back and forth as he's trying to gather the words, words of encouragement for these new Christian communities that are popping up, who are hearing about this Jesus person. This man who walked around the earth without a home, baptizing people, 
preaching in the wilderness, sleeping on a boat. If I was an early Christian in a household, I would want a letter from Paul too. And Paul writes this letter, a letter of encouragement to a group of people who are suffering. In fact, in this short letter alone, Paul uses the word suffering 12 times. Suffering, 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 suffering. These people are suffering. They are suffering as new Christians. They are reviled for the title of Christ followers. You see, it was like a cuss word back then. And not not only were they suffering in that way, they were being persecuted for their newfound religious beliefs, oppressed and imprisoned and killed for wanting to show a love, a radical love, that was freeing. And these new Christians that Paul, that Peter, not Paul, did I say Paul earlier? Peter, Paul, one of them. The new Christians that Peter is writing to are being isolated from their families for their beliefs. The powers that be are pressing down on them and they need encouragement. And to be honest with you, when I picked this text, I kind of skimmed through it and and saw the first couple sentences which said, Beloved, do not be surprised by the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as if something strange were happening. And something strange is happening. This is strange. And there is a fiery ordeal happening among us. Murder hornets. We didn't need murder hornets, you know. And I thought when I read this text that Peter was talking to me. And the more I sat with it, the more I chewed on it, I felt the old conviction that Jesus often pushes me to feel knowing that sometimes when I read scripture, I don't read it as Moses, I read it as Pharaoh. Peter is talking to a people group who know a suffering that I don't, who are experiencing a fiery ordeal stemming from systems that wish to crush them, a fiery ordeal that is not temporary or a couple months long, is lifelong. Their suffering will last as long as they worship Christ, which means it will last their lives. These resident aliens, these immigrants in their own country, these estranged people, they know a suffering I don't. Perhaps Peter isn't talking to me in this letter so much as he is talking to the 600 employees, mostly black and brown siblings of ours, who are getting coronavirus at heightened speeds in North Carolina because they must go into work. They must. They must earn a living and an income. They don't have a choice. The fact that our brothers and sisters of color are disproportionately affected and dying from this virus, death feels so far away from me in those moments. Peter isn't talking to me. Peter is talking to the families of Nina Pop and Ahmad Arbery, who were suffering long before this pandemic for being black while existing, for being black while jogging, whose lives have ended too soon by the devouring lion of the devil who roars and whispers racism among us. 
the temptation of oppression and prejudice among us. I don't think Peter's talking to me. And I don't have an answer for you. I don't have a way to wrap up this scripture in a nice bow other than to sit with the fact that I feel pain and boredom and anxiety and frustration and listlessness at the same time that I feel the privilege that comes with my social and racial and class position. That I read the news and I sigh but I don't experience the 12 kinds of suffering that Peter speaks of in the same way. No one is trying to persecute me for who I am. And yet, I think there is gospel news in here, even for me, even for me, and even for you, and even for us. Because we worship a God of grace, a God who invites us in this letter through Peter to cast all of our anxieties onto God, knowing that our brothers and sisters all over the world are suffering too, knowing that Christ himself watched his friend Lazarus die. Christ himself was isolated in a damp, dark tomb, waiting, waiting to come out. Christ himself suffered. And I think the freeing word in this is that even if we can't experience or understand the kind of suffering that comes from a power stepping on you your whole life, it doesn't mean that God doesn't see our sufferings too. They may look different but we can still cast them on God and lay them at God's feet, knowing that God invites our weary souls to give up any sense of control we may have over what's going on. And I've heard from you. I've heard your pain. I've heard about your son who relapsed for the umpteenth time because the online AA meetings just aren't doing it for some people. And I've heard about your marriages and relationships that are strained and struggling because you are living on top of each other with barely any breathing room. Taking care of little kids, God bless you. Trying to take care of each other's and yourselves. I've heard from you about the loss of getting to run that final cross-country meet or walk across that stage. I've heard from you how much you miss your families and your friends, how much you wish someone would hug you, how the loneliness of your singleness feels even heightened during this time. I've heard from you about how hard it is to live in a house with food everywhere, not being able to move your body as much, knowing you have control issues and body image issues that lurk behind you every day. I've heard from you about how hard it is to figure out your medication when all of this is going on, to not feel paranoid, to not watch a Netflix movie and shriek that people are hugging in it, realizing that we've already been conditioned to see touch differently. I've heard from you that you want normal so bad. And I'm here to wonder with you that when Christ was killed by people, by religious leaders who look a lot like me, People wanted normalcy when he rose. Couldn't he stay? Couldn't it be the same as it had been? Wasn't he supposed to look perfect again? Why did he have wounds in his hands? Why did he seem a little more haggard? Why was he so dang human? Friends, 
this text. This letter of encouragement is not written to me. Maybe it's not written to you. But it reminds me that even in the midst of my lamenting about business as unusual and the 90-second Zoom call, it also comforts me and convicts me that our brothers and sisters are still suffering all over the world and will be suffering all over the world even when this is over. And as Christians, even if we are reviled for doing so, God empowers us to spread the gospel news, to walk with those who are being stepped on by the powers that be for what they look like, for their class standing, who are dying at higher rates, who need our help, even in the midst of what we're going through, which is valid, which is real. And so I invite you, you who I cannot see, but who I feel, I invite you to cast all your anxieties onto God this morning. All of them. The minute stuff the big stuff, the heavy stuff, the death stuff, the guilt stuff. Cast them on a God who knows us, who loves us, who knows us and loves us anyway, who is challenging us to see all of our communities, to hold the suffering as we hold our own and as we hold the resources we may have, I'm with you, wounded. Thanks be to God. Having heard God's word this morning, let us stand and say what we believe. We believe that God's life-giving word and spirit has conquered the powers of sin and death, and therefore also of irreconciliation and hatred, bitter and enmity, that God's life-giving word and spirit will enable the church to live in a new obedience, which can open new possibilities of life, society, and the world. Now let us give of God's tithes and our offerings.
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God, and people will come from east and west and north and south to sit at table with him. They'll come with joy. They'll come with sorrow. They'll come with wounds as deep as a paper cut, as deep as driven nails. They'll come. They'll come and feast at his table. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. By your wisdom you created the world and everything in it. By your power you have delivered us from evil in every age. By your mercy you have promised never to forsake us. Therefore, joining the song with the saints of every age, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Before the rising of the sun and the first day of the week, Jesus rose from the dead. With the first believers, we bear witness to this good news of great joy. Remembering your goodness and grace, we offer ourselves to you with gratitude as we share this joyful feast and proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is Gracious God, pour your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and cup make us one in the body and blood of Jesus our Lord. As we have been buried with Christ by his baptism into death, raise us up by the new power of your Spirit to walk in new life. As grains of wheat are gathered from the land to become the one bread we share, gather, gather us up in your church from the ends of the earth into the glory of your new creation. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we bless you, God of glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new salvation in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Whenever you eat of this bread or drink from this cup, you proclaim the death of our Lord until he comes. Friends, these are the gifts of God, and they are for all of us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let me rest safe. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. O holy God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into this world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
by which I could see you will. So deep feeling the peace of God, which sometimes convicts us and pushes us to love harder, sometimes comforts us, and always, always loves us, gives us a grace that's never ending. Even in our suffering, God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.